G'day for Rothers. You know those around us who operate at high energy levels? From friends, family, through to the famous. Those who emanate enthusiasm. They inspire you to be better. Their words give you a rush. This rush fires off dopamine right in the middle of your brain's reward centre. My theory is that at times, just before we need to hit our straps, to tap into peak performance in our flow state, we find these people and harness their energy. I call this energy froth. I call these people frothers. This is a journey to find the frothers, to understand how they inspire themselves and others to be their best. And I'll pass it on to you on this podcast, dare I say frothcast, so you can fly into your next challenge, beaming, pumped and full of energy. This is a coffee shop with a Red Bull chaser. This is Finding the Frothers. G'day guys, uh, Benny Wallington here and I'm back after a little bit of a hiatus. Me and some buddies got together to create a project called Vote for the Planet in the Australian elections. Um, coming from someone, 32 year old, educated male, university educated male who never really thought about politics or given any fucks about it, um, decided that it was time to stand up with my buddies and try and almost take the politicians out of the election and, and make sure that people understood that this needs to be a climate election. And um, yeah, it was quite taxing over the last four weeks, so the podcast had a bit of a break. Uh, it was a radical experiment, and um, more to come on that. But today I wanted to give you just quickly before I introduce our absolute frother of a guest, my morning routines. And for me, the most important thing you can do during the day is to find a routine that allows you to um, show up your best and to access sort of flow states is what I'd say. Um, and finding a frother is, is definitely part of mine. But to give you a quick rundown, I wake up, I have about 600 mils of water, first thing. Um, I check my how I've slept through my Aura Ring, which is in an app I've got. Um, and then I will do a 300 workout, which is 100, sit up, uh, 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, and 100 lunges. Following that, I will usually have a bulletproof coffee and or just normal coffee, and then I will try and find a frother. And finding a frother for me is a conversation with an inspiring person. As you guys know, having if you've listened to any of these episodes, all inspiring people, all frothers. And after that conversation is where the magic happens. And if I can't find someone in person, I will listen to a podcast or someone that inspires me. Because I believe there's a period after when you've accessed a flow state from a conversation that you can get this beautiful runoff. Uh, and it allows you to operate at a higher level. And I call it afterglow. And it's fucking magic. Uh, I would ask any of you guys, next time you've got a frothy conversation lined up with a frother in your life, try and line up something that is troubling you, that you want to solve, straight after it. And see if it unlocks the potential. There's a lot of stuff going on up in the, um, the neurochemistry of our brains there that there's a lot of research to say that it is um, a powerful time to do it and I'll be exploring that more. But yeah, finding the frothers is supposed to be a froth hack, a flow hack for you guys. So let's talk about our frother today. Tim Silverwood, man about the ocean. I always get excited when I hear that somebody is from my hometown on the Central Coast and I get doubly excited when I know that they genuinely give a fuck about the majestic privilege that we had growing up there. If you haven't been to the Central Coast, it's uh, it's an hour north of Sydney and it is stacked with like some of the most beautiful beaches, bushlands and yeah, just areas that you'll ever cruise through and something that we kind of take for granted having grown up there. But Tim has been working for over a decade in ocean conservation to not only save Wombi, Avoca and Soldiers beaches, all sunny coast beaches, but to protect the beaches and oceans of the world. You can tell the impact somebody has and the, on, with their ideas because they pop up into your brain every day. Tim does this beautifully by combining our nature and the power of social media to have built an epic global movement. That movement is take three for the sea and quite simply alerts people to take three pieces of plastic or rubbish when they exit the water. I recently had a crisis moment myself when I was walking down the street, I was carrying my laptop and pretty much hands full, but I managed to pick up three pieces of rubbish, but I kept coming across more rubbish and more shit everywhere. And I reflected that while I could have spent my whole day picking up rubbish, we pretty much all could, depending where we live, I knew that my bit was 
somewhat done and I needed to focus on my tasks of the day and having anxiety and, and feeling incomplete about picking up stuff um, was not the best, most effective way that I could show up in, within my businesses and to, and to really like have the impact that I want to have. And I'd already done my thing. But we live in a world where picking up rubbish and keep cups are epic and they trigger us to understand the bigger issues, which is, which is phenomenal. But we must not stop there and let ourselves pack, pat ourselves on the back because what we need to do is kind of take the lead that Tim and Take 3 do, which is they do inspire daily actions. They do inspire the micro, but they also are looking to the macro and they work with institutions around how we can educate the next generation and get them inspired to really look after our oceans and look after our environments. And if you're not moved by the Take 3 movement and that seed that the team and the team are planting in our future generations and in ourselves, then spend some time flicking through their Insta feed. And I'm not normally one to, to uh, suggest that we need to spend more time on social media, but that is really where they hit their straps. And I get so much froth from Tim's posts and Take 3 from the Sea. It may inspire you to take three in your own way as well, which is all about, you know, we don't all live by the ocean, but we all live in places where conscious consumption is not top of mind and it can be troubling and there's shit everywhere. So wherever you're listening from, froth on as you listen to Tim Silverwood absolutely showing us why he is one of the biggest frothers ever to come out of the Central Coast, Australia and the planet. Yoo-hoo! G'day everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Finding the Frothers podcast. I'm absolutely frothing about this one because I'm sitting here with a Central Coast legend representing the Central Coast uh, and that's Tim Silverwood from Take 3 for the Sea. Nice to be here mate. I'm looking forward to frothing out together. Awesome mate. Um, Now you're an environmentalist and I just mentioned Take 3 for the Sea. Do you want to tell us about what's frothing on at the moment at Take 3? Yeah, sure. So look, um, Take Three for the Sea, we started it back in 2009. It was myself and two ladies, Amanda and Roberta. And we each have our own sort of unique backstories as to to why we decided to get together and and launch this organisation. But essentially, um, yeah, we're all about trying to bring awareness to the state of our oceans, particularly in respect to plastic, which is a huge and emerging issue globally. Plastic pollution um, not only threatens wildlife, but it really is starting to, um, to, to pose a risk to these entire ecosystems in our oceans and waterways. And that really then translates to this call to action. You just go out and take three items of rubbish with, um, with you when you leave a beach or a special place. And that really gets people participating in this global movement. So we've recently discovered that our like, hashtag on Instagram, take three for the sea, has been used in 129 countries. Um, and you know, conservative estimates that we're pulling out about 10 million pieces of rubbish every year through this global community. Um, but we also go into schools. So we um, do a lot of education programs in schools and surf clubs and communities. So that's a little bit about take three for the sea. Mate, I, I'm a massive advocate of Take Three for the Sea. I, I was sitting down at Bondi Beach the other day and you just watch people walking up and it's and it's always the surfers. I think the surfers and the people who are really like the watermen or water, and water women are the ones who are pulling the stuff out and being conscious. Uh, and I think that sets a good example, especially for a lot of tourists in on Bondi Beach, uh, that we that we are frothers and it's important to keep it clean. Um, so You are a surfer, mate. What is the one key activity that you do during the day that keeps you frothing? Yeah, look, I'd have to say surfing. Um, Obviously, I don't get to do it every day based on conditions and travel and things, but just being able to go out for a surf is is, is my number one thing, honestly. And I just recently moved from, from Bondi up to the northern beaches, and so I'm I'm frothing out on all the new beaches there. There's some really stunning beaches that don't really get that many people down there. And um, also just the pit water, being out, I've got a mate with a a boat and we go out on on the pit water out there and just being close to the water, in the water, immersed in it is, is, is my thing. And that's been formative for me since a very, very early age. I think that the ocean, not only does it sort of connect all of us, but it connects us to something bigger. There's something way bigger than what we ever experience when we're on the terrestrial landscape. So absolutely frothing off the ocean. 
Mate, that's brilliant. Oh, oh, I just had a thought as well because my next question is around uh, your inner network and who are the frothers that I call anchor frothers that you can connect with when you need a little bit of a, a pick-me-up. But I think the ocean is an anchor frother in itself. It may be the biggest anchor frother in the world. But back to my question, what, yeah, who, is, who are some anchor frothers in your life that you can go to? Yeah, look, um, obviously my, my beautiful wife, I think, you know, when you go and take a, a journey on this um, purpose-based um, career path, it's not always easy. And that's certainly something that, um, you know, finding those energy sources around you who can help you through those challenging and tough times. So my wife is also um, in a purpose-based um, project. She's got a, a project called Mighty Good Undies that are organic cotton and ethically certified um, underwear. So we do a lot of work collaborating together, just trying to, to find our best path through the, the challenges of setting up these purpose-based endeavors. Um, and obviously, you know, just my, my team, I've got a wonderful team at Take 3 who I simply couldn't be doing what it is that we're doing without them. So I've just come off the back of a weekend where we not only did we have our annual general meeting, but we had a really awesome team workshop day. I'm just sort of sitting back going, wow, I mean, you know, we started this thing nine years ago, but I really feel like it's got the, the legs to go super special places with great people. So people that get it uh, are the people I want to be around. Mate, that's brilliant because if you've got people at home and then in the workplace and then you've also got a crossover at home with the workplace with your wife, uh, that's super important because the struggle is real for social entrepreneurs um, like it is for all entrepreneurs but it seems like there's a collective, um, yeah, we, 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 we always feel like we want to do more than what we've done so far but we know that if we get the right people around us, the right frothers, we can do that. And um, what's some uh, music that really gets you fired up, that really has you frothing? I'm loving. So um, one of the things about moving up to the Northern Beaches was we've been living in a quite a small uh, apartment in Bondi um, was the opportunity to pull out all my records. I've got a lot of old records and now they're all alphabetically in order and we can play the music much louder. So look, I dig in there. The, the one song I was thinking when you saw this question is it's so cheesy and tacky, but I really remember um, mornings with my mum where she'd go and put on a CD of Spando Ballet, which is like an 80s <laughs> classic, right? And this song, Gold. So you are gold. Then it just gets me fired up. So Spando Ballet, represent. Mate, that's awesome. I'm definitely going to seek that out. I'm going to pump myself up before I go for a surf later. Um, mate. What about, you have such a sick network, like I was just looking at your website, there's some of the people that are advocates for, um, for Take 3, uh, like Ace Bucken, he's a Central Coast boy as well, pro surfer, former pro surfer, Kai Otten, Blinda Bags, who's like an epic longboarder, also environmentalist activist. Um, you have such a sick uh, inner circle, but is there someone just on the boundary, is there someone that you'd really like to, look, uh, to, to reach out to in the not too distant future? Yeah, look, I think um, onwards and upwards, right? So I even look at that list of ambassadors and I'm really impressed at, at who we've got on there, but I'm always wondering who's next around the corner. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I had an incredible experience a few months ago, a couple of months ago, in going to spend some time with Tim Flannery. So there's people that are in that sort of upper echelons of academia, bridging over to communicators and activists. So, you know, the likes of David Suzuki or obviously David Attenborough, these are the people that as I was growing up and becoming educated and inspired to be an environmentalist, these are the ones I was sort of going to. So I find, um, you know, you never really know what's around the corner. Once you start building up a little bit of momentum in this space, who knows? So I've already met um, David Suzuki, already spent some time with Tim Flannery. I've seen David Attenborough on stage. That was good enough for me just to sit there and, and hear his words directly. But um, there's probably others out there that are just, just almost there. Mate, and that's like the, the community froth, uh, going and putting yourself in situations with people who genuinely give a fuck. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about a little uh, the adventure that you went on just a couple of months ago. Can you tell us a bit about that and the collective froth and the feeling that you you would have taken away from that? Yeah, that was a really incredible experience. So it was um, an immersion trip, I call it. I um, don't know if that's just specifically what they say, but um, the Climate Council coordinated it and they basically wanted to bring together leaders and influencers and people who could who could make a difference to Heron Island up on the Great Barrier Reef. So the theme was all about climate change and particularly, particularly threats to the Great Barrier Reef, which is our greatest living treasure here in Australia and an important one around the world. Um, but the way that it 
it, it transpired, you know, three nights together, four days, people that really didn't know each other, but there were some people there who had quite serious reputations. And just to see how we all came together to go through what was quite a wrenching experience, learning about the state of the reef through people like Tim Flannery and Professor Ove Holgelberg, like absolute, you know, these guys know the reef so intimately and they know exactly what we're up against when it comes to the threats of climate change. So we were really challenged by a lot of those thoughts and and, um, and experiences, but at the end of it, we've just created this incredible bond. So all of us are communicating almost daily on a WhatsApp group. We've had people that are like CFOs for listed companies who have created incredible initiatives to reduce their carbon emissions. Just last night, we went and saw a photo exhibition by Tamara Dean, who she actually asked all the whole group to, to go and get naked and swim through the reef on the last morning, and half of us did. And the photographs that she's captured, really, to me, it looks like we're a school of fish uh, swimming through this landscape. And I think there's something really special about us sort of coming together and working for this common and united goal. And I just got to have a cheeky look at those photos, and they're absolutely fantastic. When they're available, I might... um. Flick them up as well in, in the show notes, if that's what you do. Um, <laughs> mate, so inspiring. I think uh, when you do get together with like-minded people, you do get like an extended flow state. And I think connecting over WhatsApp, it's you guys sound like people who are just legitimate action takers and then you've now taken it off into your own lives, which is, which is amazing. Uh, you mentioned David Attenborough before. I'm not sure if he will be yours, but who is your ultimate hero frother? And can you take me to meeting that person and the first 15 minutes? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, hero frother. I mean, Sylvia Earle was pretty special. So in 2016, I was invited to go over to Washington DC to, to, to run um, a session at this Our Ocean conference. And it was incredible. Like Barack Obama was there and Leonardo DiCaprio. And I was there at the invitation of John Kerry, the Secretary of State. But Sylvia Earle was this one where I was just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, they call her her deepness. She's been working on ocean conservation for decades and decades and decades. And she still gets around to every single conference. She was just at the Our Ocean Conference in Bali a couple of weeks ago as well. So I look at her and all those days when I'm feeling a bit flat or a bit sort of exhausted from the struggle, I go, hey, if Sylvia can do it, I can do it. So she's definitely one of my hero frothers. Mate, that's awesome. How, how, would, uh, how would you access Sylvia if you were feeling a bit flat? Look, um, I think it's really for me, like she's not someone I can just pop on speed dial and, and go and have a chat, but also just seeing how others revere her as well. So I think she's got this sort of energy that's just uh, emanating from her that really gives energy to so many people. So whether it's just sort of watching a clip or, or looking into one of the, the incredible books that she's published, um, I just sort of tap into to Sylvia in that way and I feel my, uh, my mojo emerging. Mate, to see you speak uh, so passionately about Sylvia, I've not heard of her before, so that'll be one of my first things I do when I get off this podcast. Uh, got another question around people that may have passed on, um, but you can still draw froth from. Is there anyone who fits in that category for you? Yeah, look, um, I am such an advocate of travel. So for me, um, I went to university and did a Bachelor of Science and learnt, um, you know, it was managed a major in sustainability and it was like, okay, I'm going to go and this is going to be my career. But then I went and did travelling and suddenly all those learnings that I'd had during university were completely um, dishevelled and, and, re- and needed to be reorganised because of those personal experiences. And travel really came to me through my grandmother she um she passed away this year in august and she was um i'm sorry it was in july but she would have been 101 in august so we got to celebrate her 100th birthday last year but she even at the age when i was 13 she took myself and my sister to europe to meet sort of some of the extended family we went hiking through the pyrenees as a 13 year old i went down and saw the beautiful coastline of southern France and it was just kind of like, wow, this is the start of something big for me. So ever since then, I've always had this sort of passion and connection to travel and it really um, really started with her. So to Valet Muriel, she was an absolute champion um, and certainly one of many sort of strong women in my life and I think there's something really amazing about um, about female spirit and female tenacity and I'm, I'm all about that. I'm a, I'm a feminist at heart. Mate, props to your grandma. What an absolute legend. Like, massive froth as she sound like. And you're actually wearing a shirt, The Future is Female, which is an epic shirt. <laughs> Loving it. Loving it. 
Mate, what are you actually uh, frothing about the most about the future of the world? Big question. Massive question. Um, people. People. Awesome. I think um, at, at the end of the day, no, we can't sit around and wait for someone to come along and, and fix these problems. I've always sort of loved that, that proverb around, you know, you are, we are the people we've been waiting for. And that's what I've seen really in the last sort of nine years since I became active and outspoken about plastic pollution and our oceans is seeing that at start it was kind of like a bit of a fringe idea oh yeah you want me to pick up rubbish or what plastic it's not a, it's not a problem and then just sort of seeing how it's really the landscape has just been transformed especially in the last 12 to 18 months that abc series war on waste and documentaries like blue that i feature in just really a game changer in getting people to kind of band together and that is the only way we're going to solve these sort of global problems. Um, over at the Our Ocean Conference in Bali a couple of weeks ago, so inspired by youth that are uh, in countries like the Philippines, Indonesia, and throughout Southeast Asia, these are the ones they are living on on the front line. Like this is ground zero when it comes to where a lot of the pollution in the oceans is coming from. These developing regions and sort of countries like China and India. But the youth, they get it now. And yeah, they're up against it. Yeah, there's a huge lot of work to do. But if we can inspire and empower the youth, then anything is possible. Mate, and they're they're in good hands. Having uh, I've seen you speak a couple of times, so um, you're a very engaging speaker. Anyone who needs a frothy speaker, come out there and and, and guide the way. Uh, Tim's your man. Uh, speaking of your skills and your gifts, what would be a uh, one workshop that you would create that would sort of condense all of your gifts together, and what would it be called? Yeah, oh, good question. Um... I sort of love the idea of inspiring future leaders. I really like that it didn't really appear to me until quite recently just the significance of how much youth education we've been doing at Take Three for the Sea. So it just started out quite naturally when we began, like, oh, let's go and talk to schools. Um, and since that time, we've educated close to 300,000 school students. Um, and for me, that means traveling all around the country. And yes, it can be exhausting. But knowing you got that chance, I'm just about to go and talk to a school after the podcast today, you got that chance to kind of connect with these people and who knows what's going to come as a result of it. And only now am I starting to get some really interesting glimpses, like we recruited a new position recently and one of the people who applied said, oh, you know, you came and spoke to my school when I was in year 10. I've just finished doing my university degree in environmental science. I'd love to work with you. I'm like, holy moly, like... I can have, actually have a role in guiding some of these people's decisions about the kind of studies that they do and the careers that they lead. Another one, we had um, this incredible um, musician, Fletcher Pillon. He came and performed at our annual general meeting over the weekend, and he performed uh, in a school dance when he was in year four, when he was 10 years old. Now he's 17. He's going to be a superstar, this musician. And he's like, take three has been part of my life since I was 10 years old. So... I think we're really they're going to continue that focus on youth and turning um, future leaders into advocates for a sustainable future for sure. Beautiful, I love that too. Um, finding the frothers is all about connecting with frothers, and you are you are very good at it, it seems, and um, you travel around the world connecting with frothers. Do you have any tips or tricks for people to uh, connect with people that they might not feel like they can reach out to? Um, look, I guess I think for for me. It's been it's been authentic. Like I just I I don't think I've used any sort of particular techniques that have um, you know that I can really sort of package up and offer. I think if 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 you're authentic and you're doing it for all the right reasons, then they almost come to you. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, if young people are listening and they really want to get um, the attention of people, I mean, obviously, social media is just crazy, right? You can mm. just send anyone in the world a direct message or tag them in a story. And they're going to know about you. They might not respond, but they're going to know that you're on their radar. So if you do want to adopt some tricks and techniques, then I guess social media is a, is a pretty darn easy one. It's available at our fingertips and it's free. Mm -hmm. So we've, um, we've loved using social media through Take 3 for the Sea. We're about to clock, I think, 190,000 followers across Facebook and Instagram. And that's really what's helped us to, to create this, um, this brand that mm -hmm. so many people know about. It's... Um, not just that, but then that translates then into word of mouth because people are doing it and go, oh yeah, it's take three for the sea. Haven't you heard about it? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, go social. Beautiful. Uh, and I love the actionable outcome. I think that's super important. What is the best way for people to reach out to you? Uh, look, obviously, take three for the sea is pretty easy to find online, either our website or our socials. Um, and Tim Silverwood is a, is a pretty unique name as well. So throw that in anywhere and you, you're going to come and find me. Um, but yeah, back to social. I mean, if people do want to reach out, 
the direct message is always something that I do see. Sometimes I'm busy, it might take me a while to get back to you, but um, that's where you can find me in that uh, digital world. But if you see me in the street or in the surf, come and, come and say good day. I'm a real person too. Um, and yeah, just, I'm so, um, so stoked that other people you know, are into what we're doing and are getting really into this sort of revised pitch around sustainability. I think sustainability got really sort of washed out in the 90s and the early start of the um, sort of 2000s, but I think we're coming back with a renewed focus now. And I think these issues of plastic and waste are actually really tangible ones that we can all connect with because we all have the opportunity to pick up trash. We all have the opportunity to refuse using some of these single-use disposable items and we can all have a conversation. Open up the conversation. Speaking of conversations and, and literature, is there any books that you can recommend for people to read that are full of froth? <laughs> yeah, look, it depends how much you really want to get um, into sort of the deep sustainability space, but there's certainly been some texts over the years that I've, um, I've really enjoyed, like Tim Flannery. Um, some of his books have been really quite powerful for me. I really like those books I'm reading at the moment, the um, like Sapiens. Oh, um, yes, yeah, so am I. Yeah, and just like... <laughs> You kind of get this snapshot of the world. It just sort of helps you wake up out of your stupor and really reframe the the context of the decisions that we need to make to preserve this planet. So I think they're really good, particularly if you're at the start of your journey, just mm-hmm. to have that little wake up call. Like, okay, I get it now. I can see the big picture, and this is what I can do to help contribute to it. So that'd be two books that I'm um, pretty keen on. Amazing. Yeah, I've only just started Sapiens, and I'm just like, oh, every every chapter you're like, Phew. And they're only short chapters for so for people who don't um, particularly like reading or they're little chunks. It's quite, quite I can get distracted pretty easy, and um, I'm really enjoying Sapiens, mate. As part of finding the frothers, a really important thing for me is to connect frothers with frothers. Now you might have already met this guy, being the space that you're already in, um, but I used to work for a positive impact crowdfunding company back in London uh, and I used to work on some sustainable board shorts called Riz board shorts and I used to work on another project called Two Minute Beach Clean. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've ever heard, heard yeah, of Martin of Dory. You know yeah. Martin Dory? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to connect you with, you've already connected to Martin Dory, but I'm going to connect you with Riz Smith okay. who, who runs Riz board shorts okay. uh, and they've kind of got a circular economy vibe going so they take the plastics out of the ocean, turn them into super high quality board shorts and then tell the stories um of yet yeah, of, of sustainable buying and and yeah circular economy is super important i know you've spoken to uh, our mutual friend sarah about that but yeah mate i'd love to connect you with riz and maybe me and you and martin can go for a beer one day as well dude i would love that so much so obviously martin and i are um absolutely common souls you yeah know, his project two minute beach clean sort of calls upon exactly that same onus that we can all make a little difference and um so we've been connected digitally, but I would love to have a beer with you and Martin. That would be gold. And go, gold. And go, and go for a surf. And go for a surf. <laughs> awesome, mate. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Always a pleasure to hang out with you and, and um, fly the Central Coast flag. Thanks, mate. And um, really great that you're doing all this great work and um, love that your froth is, is spreading and you've got so much positivity. So nice to be here, mate. You, man. It's you. <laughs> quick one guys to keep this show afloat feel free to subscribe and share the love maybe even leave a cheeky comment review that'd be awesome you can find the show notes on my website at bennywallington.com and finally this episode was sponsored by my grandma joyce reichel who passed away last year from dementia she was one of the original frothers and would talk to anyone on the bus train or wherever and generously impart her energy and wisdom so if you see an elderly person who's looking for someone to froth with go and hang out with them They've got the best stories. Also, a huge shout out to our producer, Lily Haynes, for bringing this to life, and Billy Otto, who created that beautiful introduction in true Billy Otto style. Also, my buddies in Australia and the UK, who have been super generous in swinging me feedback. In a way, all of you guys are sponsoring me with your time. Love to the guests, past and future, and also to you guys for listening. Ciao for now. You!